Welcome back to Studio 701. We love to learn all about animals, big and small, on this show. And for our critter conversations, we get to talk with the founders of For Bell's Sake about what you should consider when adopting a pet. Good morning, Studio 701. I'm here with some very special guests today. Uh, Christian and Shelby, of course. You know them from For Bell's Sake. And who do we have with us today? So we have two of our black labs. We have Mixie and Twyla. Do you want to be adopted? You do? What a good girl. Do you want to stay and rescue forever? No. Do you like being homeless? No. Do you want a family for Christmas? You do? Good girl. <laughs> <laughs> These two are all personality. Yes. <laughs> They've been really fun to meet and uh, and get to know a little bit. So Mixie and Twyla have been here for a while. Can you tell us about their adoption story? Um, so they've been with us a little while. They did come in with some behavior issues and underweight, a little malnourished. So right away, our first focus was to work through some boundary setting and and um, just some basic training with them and then of course to get them up to a healthy weight. So once we had that done, they've just kind of been waiting with very little adoption interest. That's too bad. And we saw on Facebook that you had talked about um, some bias that happens when people are considering adoption um, regarding the look of the, the dog. And some dogs get adopted faster and others don't. Right. So. I think we're seeing it more and more actually now because we have kind of gone more to a digital age. It used to be where you had a shelter and everybody walked through and looked at all the animals and you could really get a gauge for them in person. And now we're so digital that it's by pictures and videos often. And when it comes to a black dog, so they are the most common color of dogs. They have dark eyes, dark features, everything just kind of blends in in the photograph and you can't really see that personality shine through. So they're often overlooked just for that reason alone. People want different, they want unique, they want something that stands out. And when you have several black dogs, they all just kind of get overlooked. So when adopting a dog, what should you be looking for? I mean, um, basing it on the photo is obviously not the best way to, to get to know an uh, animal. Um, what do you recommend? I should say majority of animals fit a breed characteristic. You always have those one or two that don't really fit the mold, but for the most part, you have, you know, your working dogs, they're higher energy, they're more driven, they can be stubborn at times, and they require a lot of training. And then you have your more passive, more lazy, more chill breeds. So it really depends on your lifestyle. That's why we try to tell people, don't go off of appearance alone. Go off of what fits your lifestyle because that's what's gonna lead you to that perfect fit. These two would not do great in an apartment expected to chill on a couch all day. They just wouldn't. And we see that probably more than anything, breeds surrendered because they don't fit the family's lifestyle. Our labs get surrendered to us quite a bit for being mouthy. Well, they're a Labrador retriever. They're designed to retrieve and have things in their mouth. So when they don't, they're grabbing your hand or they're grabbing your pants or they're carrying your shoe off. They're doing what they are designed to do. And it's channeling that in a way that fits your lifestyle. So more than anything, go off of the animal's personality. Do they fit into my life? Can we accommodate their needs before looking at appearance only? I think to take into consideration their age too, because I think a lot of times people go towards like a puppy um, but they don't realize that how much extra is involved in a puppy um, if you have a full household a busy household uh, adding a puppy might be a little too much chaos because you have to train it you know behavioral training uh, house training um, they may bark a lot socializing is huge uh, it's critical at that age so a lot of additional things are required so sometimes looking at the age may help a little bit the last litter of puppies we got in um, we had like over a hundred applications for them and uh, there were five of them yeah <laughs> so you know it, it's definitely like I don't know people just feel like that they can train or like if they only get a puppy they can train it versus an adult you know every every animal can be trained every animal can learn a new name any animal can you know be successful it just takes you know repetition it takes um, consistency you know so it just it's really about the environment and the people and dedication towards the animal what do you look for for a good fit for the animals we i think what makes us unique is we really get to know our animals well we're dedicated and devoted and they're like ours while they're here so we try to match 
to them? What are their needs? What are their specific needs? If it was for one of these girls, an apartment would not make it through, you know? But if it was somebody that maybe is an active person, likes to hike, likes to bike, likes to go out, loves to play fetch, then that's their soulmate. We're very much for fitting the needs of the animal because that's what makes a successful adoption. We want the animal to be happy, but we also want the people to be happy. Nobody needs to have a, that heartbreak of it didn't work out and having to return or just the stress of it not being a good fit. So tell us a little bit about what's next for Fabel's sake. I hear that you have some big plans underway. So we, we just recently bought uh, two buildings. Um, they each can contain seven separate rooms. So we're looking at expanding uh, so we can take in and save rescue more animals. The capacity we should be able to hopefully uh, at least double or triple capacity. Uh, the plan is to be able to take an additional 28 animals. Uh, expanding like boarding things, because we do board for prior adopters or military that are deployed, um, but we do know like that becomes an issue a lot of times when... We don't have uh, the space. Yeah, we just, people don't have the space um, or, or, the, or the ability to pay like a high boarding cost, so we're looking at trying to you know, provide more uh, assistance to the community in any way we can. That's awesome. Well, if you think you might be the forever home for one of these beautiful girls, or if you'd like to check out the other animals available for rescue, check out forbellsake.org. Back to and you, Amber. This has been Critter Conversations, and once again, for more information about For Bell's Sake, make sure you visit forbellsake.org. Dot org. Love seeing all those pups. And coming up next, if you're wondering if now is a good time to refinance your mortgage, stay tuned. Brent Fitz